closer than we actually are is our weight. Being out of shape, being old. It really depends on the person. This came up on my TikTok. I think I look I think I look older now than when I was a chubby. But I No you don't. What? You look way older here than you did there. What are you talking about? You look significantly younger now. What are you talking about? No, the weight absolutely made you look older. That's a factual statement. Am I wrong, dude? When you look at this woman, it's like a good 10 years past whatever this is. Like, she's not bad looking. I'm not saying she's bad looking, but she definitely looks older here. I mean, maybe it's just a bad picture, but no, bro. Am I wrong? Can somebody please in the comment section let me know if I'm wrong on this? I think I look older now than when I was a chubby but i am older <laughs> so i'm supposed to look older mm, not always dude it just kind of depends like sometimes people look very very old like way past their years and then other people not so much like the amount of times that i've watched like these fat creators go yeah i'm 21 and i go 21 <gasps> 21 is insane dude i see it so many times when i think they're in their mid-30s or I think they're on like their second or third child. I think, yes, this is the person that's like obviously a grown adult that has a lot of responsibilities, children, and they take care of a whole entire family. But in reality, no, they just left. Like <laughs> they're probably still in college, which is re really, really crazy. But no, this woman absolutely looks younger uh, now than she did in her younger years, I suppose. And the weight is most definitely going to do one of two things. For some people, it makes you look like a baby face. I've seen a lot of guys in my life that were, in my opinion, more attractive guys, but most definitely had the baby face because they had a lot more fat on them and women would 100% think that they were like way younger than they actually were. And, or it makes you significantly older. Like you look like you're, I don't know, a grandmother by the time you're like 24. And it, it happens all the time. Like that one girl that threatened to sue me, go back to the old video of um, Addie. She she looked like she was 35, 36, 37. That's the weight that I that's that's the height. That's the age I thought she was, but then I looked on her TikTok and I saw that she was celebrating her 24th birthday and I was like that's not true, dude. 24 years old is insane. So I see it quite a bit. Like people that are very very young but actually appeal to they appear to be way 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 older than they actually are. But uh no, I think she looks way younger here. But I generally only date men, and they are very fat phobic. White men are only fat phobic, really? Is that true? I don't know, dude. I don't know what the 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 the, the legitimacy of that claim is, dude. I mean, granted, it's her opinion. It's her, like what she's experienced that white dudes are all fat phobic, and it's cool that she dates white men. Um, I identify as a snow bunny myself, but. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that white dudes are just default fat phobic. That's kind of a crazy ass thing to say. Uh, as opposed to what? Like are fat dudes just, I mean, sorry, are black dudes way more like open to the fact that women are fatter? Are they just willing to accept less? Like what exactly are you trying to infer exactly when you say that white dudes are fat phobic? Why? Why are they fat phobic exactly? Can you please go into that? But that's a red flag for me. It's a red flag for you for a white dude to be fat phobic. I, I would need to know what she means by fat phobic because these people have different definitions of what fat phobic is. Like if a guy tells you like, hey, I'm becoming unattracted to you. You have this major problem. It's your weight. And I genuinely think that you, I would find you more attractive if you were more attractively sized for me. If you consider that to be a red flag, then that's dumb. Or if you consider something like, hey, I'm your doctor and I just tested your blood and you have type 20 diabetes. Your, your fucking blood sugar is like 80 when it should be like five. Yeah, you, you probably need to lose weight and you would consider that to be fat phobic. Then I'd definitely look at you sideways. Like I would just need to know what you mean by fat phobic. Eight men and they are very fat phobic. But that's a red flag for me. Just because somebody's plus size, just because someone's not your preference doesn't mean... You don't treat them with respect. Sure, you could treat them with respect. And by the way, um, a red flag doesn't always mean that you break up with that person. It's just something to be aware of. Like, if there's an age gap in a relationship, let's say, like, there's a 10-year age gap, it's a red flag, but it's not a means to break up. If you guys are compatible, then it's fine. Or if you find out, like, you're dating a guy, and then you find out that that guy has a friend 
that is a girl and he had sex with her in the past, it's a red flag. But again, it's not a reason to break up with that person. It's just something to be aware of. It's just something to know that this is an, this could be an issue later on in the future and maybe question them that person a little bit about that. So I'm not even going to go as far as say, like, even though this person that she's talking about is fat phobic, that's not even necessarily a bad thing. That's just something to be aware of. We have to unlearn the idea that there's only one way to be sexy and that's to be skinny and have a flat stomach. That's the only thing that's desirable because there are plenty of commit. I, I, I don't I, I genuinely do not think that in today's world that the only way you can be sexy is to have a flat stomach speaking as a person with a flat stomach. I don't think that many people like there are plenty of guys out there. There are plenty of women out there that do enjoy the sensation of another man or woman's stomach placed upon their back and injecting them with whatever they're doing and, you know, placing their their stomach on your back on your back your lower back if you're into that or, or you're into belly bounce belly bouncing right where a guy's just like you know uh i guess like water what, what, what's that thing like belly flopping on your stomach like if that's what you want it's fine i'm not here if you you know one thing i want to say right it, it could be a benefit if you're a guy and a girl because it's like oh he can suck on your boobs and then you can suck on his too like you get a double you get you know 69 boob sucking or whatever like if that's what you want to do it's fine i don't think that in America, especially, I think we're pretty diverse on the beauty standards. I'm sick of these people saying that America is like very, very, you know, caught in the dark or like we're we're super, super behind in terms of cultural understanding of fat bodies. When in reality, I think that probably in, in America and westernized countries, we're probably the most liberal when it comes to the acceptance of bodies, dude. Like if you go to like any other country around the world, they are pretty, pretty conservative about that. They do not like it when you're fat. And especially in like Asian countries or like Middle Eastern countries, fuck no, dude. They do not tolerate shit like that. But go off, queen. Spoiler alert, it's not. I know what you're gonna say, Juliana, but I've had these experiences in the past that validate my fear, that teach me that it is true that people don't like bigger women. Most, what is most people don't like bigger women. And it's not even just women though. It's like most people in general are not gonna be attracted to people that are increased in weight because there's a lot of complications that come with that. And most people just don't wanna deal with more problems when they get into a relationship. Like, don't get me wrong, when you do go into a relationship, there are gonna be issues that arise Obviously, issues are going to arise anytime you introduce anything new in your life at all. You get a new car, there's going to be issues with that. You get a new job, make more money, more money, more problems. You know what I'm talking about. Like, things like that happen. But that's not to say that like you're knowingly engaging into a relationship that you know is going to be negative. Like You know it's going to have problems as soon as you get into the relationship. This person is heavy set, Therefore, they're probably going to have weight issues in the sense of like walking upstairs. They're not going to be able to like accompany me on hikes or walks or whatever. They're probably going to be in and out of the doctors. They might have joint problems. They might complain about all this stuff. They might be asleep all the time. Like These things are all things that people have to worry about. Um, that they don't have to worry about if they were dating a conventionally sized person, which is a crazy way of saying like a thin person. So yes, you, you can find somebody that is very attractive to be fat, but most people in general are just not, just not that way. Most people just don't want to deal with that. Help me is real. Which is okay, by the way. If you don't want to date somebody because they're fat, don't feel like you're a bad person for that. Realizing that everyone on this planet has a different type and hear me out. So for it's like, I understand the point, but the point is very, very... It's almost like irrelevant to say like everybody has a type. Therefore, if you're fat, then you're going to be somebody's type guaranteed. Like I get it. I do. I really understand it. But it's like playing the lottery anytime you want to like get a relationship. It's like you have to run the numbers and like that one in seven billion chance that you may be somebody's candidate is astronomical. And it's like thinking about the numbers, right? I remember like if you look at the numbers on this, right? Most people have standards. Most people want to date somebody that has some things, right? So like most, if you ask some girls, what, what you're going to hear is like, I don't know, like he's got to be, let's just say this superficial, right? Got to be six foot, got to be heterosexual, has to have a job, has to drive a car, has to have a career, has to have a degree, has to, you know, like there's a lot of stuff. How many dudes are you just knocking off the top? And then also how many of those dudes are you knocking off the top that don't even like you, right? Like these, I, I feel like, a lot of people are work on this mis misunderstanding of like you you have all of these criteria and constraints but then you also have to you also have to be very very attractive to that person as well you know
So like I see a lot of people projecting it so heavily where they go there is somebody else for you because I know that because I know that I am okay with dating somebody of like this this kind of caliber. Well, that's fine that you are that person, but how many other people and by the way, it doesn't even work like that in practicality. I bet like this person probably didn't even date somebody or is married or whatever to a very fat person. It's just not like that. It's very easy for somebody to say I would date somebody that's fat or unattractive or overweight or just disgusting in every way but never do that actually. Like words are easily said, but action is never taken. So yes, uh, it is possible for somebody that is very, very unattractive to acquire a relationship. I don't doubt that. But it's also like, why would you ever be in a situation where you're even running the numbers on something like that to begin with? You're literally playing the lottery. The way you should be doing it is like making yourself as humanly attractive as possible in the sense of like, Working on yourself, becoming more attractive in varieties of different ways. This could be like losing weight, going to the gym, becoming better in conversation, mid-maxing funny. I don't know, making more money. Like there are plenty of things that you could do to make yourself more attractive. And it really hinders you to sit there and go, somebody's going to love you exactly the way you are no matter what. Because you're basically just saying that somebody somewhere will like you, but there's no guarantee that you'll like them, if that makes any sense. Like, what what are the chances of that? What, are you just going to accept that one person because they accept you no matter what? Which, by the way, is not even a good thing. If you date somebody and they want you to be completely exactly the way that you are right now, that's terrible. That's gross. You should want somebody that's looking at you critically and going, wow, you have so many of these great features, but this other thing could be adjusted in a positive, a positive direction. Personally, I love like a feminine pretty boy um, and my best friend Sara loves boys that have like tattoos all over their face. They're a little bit more. Ah, dude, there's some weird categories, dude. You like guys that are feminine? Okay, pretty boy feminine guys. I mean, that's fine. It's It's fine to, it's okay to like that. Personally speaking, I don't know many dudes that are very feminine and if they are very feminine it's probably you might be dating a gay man like i've met a lot of dudes that would be considered to be um very attractive pretty boys that are almost always gay which is fine but there's that um tattoos on the face is crazy i don't know about that dude what guys are you dating with tattoos on the face like criminals like what are you talking about what <laughs> like i don't know soundcloud rappers like who are you dating that that have that are good good upstanding citizens of society with face tattoos doesn't that negate you from like 90 percent of employment i guess all right fine sure that's fine um the fem the femboy one is kind of crazy uh question for the ladies or anybody that's like anybody in the comment section could you date somebody that was prettier than you because usually i find that women are almost always prettier than guys because guys are like low effort women for the most part and i always thought that women would want to be the more prettier instead of like having people you know like looking at you um they're gonna be looking at your boyfriend because he's just so magnificently you know fucking beautiful but anyway more grungy and more masculine and we laugh all the time at grungy and more masculine dude i don't know dude i mean i know they're separated but like face tattoos and being masculine are just not the same by the way there's a new definition of masculine nowadays. I don't understand why so many people think that in order to be masculine, you need to make like $200,000 a year, not know how to wash your shirts or like uh, wash your shirts and like dress like a metrosexual. That's not what it is. How different our types are. And we just say like, I would never give a second look to a guy that you are interested in and vice versa. That I think that's bullshit though. I think oftentimes when people have these like very, very specific types, I think they're coping. And I think that re the reality of the situation is like, if we looked in the past of the people that they dated, I bet none of those, none of those people they dated are reflections of that. And that's okay. Because most of the time, you don't know what you're attracted to until you meet that person. And then you realize like, whoa, okay, hold on. I actually really am attracted to this person. This person has a lot of great values and quirkiness to them that makes them so incredibly valuable. And I'm going to like tip, you know, I'm going to dip my toe in the water real quick. I'm going to eat their butt cheeks real quick just to see what it's all about. And that's fine. You know, like maybe you thought that you like femboys and guys that were very, very pretty. And then you came across a dude that was like seven foot three and he looked like half Thor B. Jordanson and he can use you like a fleshlight. And that's like really valuable for you now because you like now you find the appreciation of this giant man. I'm not saying her per se. But I'm just saying in general, like what if you're that person and you find like somebody that's very attractive to you um, outside of this category. Like I always think that it's OK to have a particular type, but sometimes it's OK to go outside that type because sometimes you don't even know what your type is. 
that doesn't mean that one isn't desirable or one is like the wrong type of person to be attracted to because that's the beauty of attraction is that we all like different things. It's to compare like, oh, I like femme boys compared to masculine boys and then go, see, like there's nothing wrong with like in either of those guys. So therefore it's fine to just be fat. It's just fine to be 250, 350, 500 pounds. Like it's just okay. Like those two things are very different, right? Like there's a lot of value in a guy that's maybe feminine presenting or a guy that's like more traditionally masculine presenting compared to a guy that can't even get off the fucking couch to get the Uber Eats order. And you have to like suck his toenails because his bunions are like really, really fermented so much that the only lubrication he needs at this point is your mouth water. Like it's just, they're two very different things. And I know it might be hard to believe, but the exact same goes for different body types. It's, also- it's a bad comparison spent so long being told that there's only one body type that's desirable and wanted and it's just not true everyone has different preferences just like me and my friend with the clean boy versus the tattoo yeah but like you're you can say that like everybody has different preferences but like literally 99 okay not 99 maybe like 98 percent of the population is just not going to be attracted to people that are bigger and it this depends on the biggerness so like if you're 20 30 40 50 pounds over i'm sure you're probably fine but once you start getting up there in sizes then you start to really run the risk that you're going to be negating like a good portion or most of society out of the dating market. And then you're only, then you have to go into the niche categories of dudes that just want to like suck your gut because your belly button stretches farther than your vagina or um, you're dating men that can literally probably wear bigger bras than you. Like it's just not, it's not a flex. It's not a good thing. So if you do want to do that, that's, that's your game you could do that but you will be negating like the majority of the dating bracket and there's no other way to say it than that like you could say like feminine masculine guys sure but those two things are very different from like most people just not being attracted to fat people boy as hard as it might be to wrap your mind around you have to start unlearning the idea that there is only one way to be desired i don't know about you but i'm looking for a monogamous relationship it only takes one person and for me i have faith and trust that that one person is going to be attracted to me and sure um but that's not really saying anything like oh yeah i'm just looking for a monogamous relationship like everybody like there are sure like i'm sure there are some polyamorous people out there sure but those people are few and far between most people are monogamous like i you know it's such a crazy thing to be like see see like fat people can get relationships like just like me how i'm monogamous like i know that i want one person it's like the same thing like if you want a fat person and i want one person it's the same thing it's really not the same thing it's really not like almost everybody on the planet wants to be with one person and then you're sitting here like <laughs> comparing that to a fat person is not the same and all of me they're going to think my body is beautiful they're going to think my soul is beautiful they're just going to think every part about me is beautiful i, I feel like people nowadays have this uh, misunderstanding about relationships and i think it's like all disney i think disney fucked it up for everybody dude because everybody nowadays thinks that thinks that they have to be loved completely and that even though they might have like really, really bad traits or toxic traits, somehow those things are just going to be forgiven or accepted by the right person because the right person is not going to determine those things to be bad traits, but more so they're going to accept those things as traits that are valuable because they're looking at them differently. Therefore, you're just incredibly valuable and there's nothing wrong with you and you're a perfect human being specimen and all this stuff. When in reality, it's not like that. I don't know if any, I don't know if any of these people have actually ever dated before, but People are, both people are always going to be trash, terrible. Like you may not know that person's trash or terrible for the first month or two or even three or four because most of the time you're showing out the best traits first. But after a little bit of time, you slowly start to realize, okay, this person like shits with the door open. This, This person likes to start arguments for no reason. You know, like things happen, right? You start realizing this stuff and that's okay. There's a thing called compromise and there's a thing called understanding and there's a thing called nuance and you have to understand these things like so for instance if you're dating a guy and he likes to leave the bathroom door open and you don't like that then you can go hey um i don't like the way you leave this bathroom door open can we talk about that and then he go okay sure and then you talk about it and then eventually you get him to like not have the door open or at least not that much right i don't fucking know um it's like it's like engaging in anal sex before asking you know what i'm talking about like you have to these things are things you have to talk about you can't just do shit 
and expect it to work out. You need to actually go through, talk about these things before they're issues. Otherwise, they become bigger issues. And sometimes people just tolerate them for a really long time. Then it becomes really weird when eventually you do break and you go, okay, I do want to talk about this. Even though you've been doing this for over a year and a half, I do now want to talk about how this is an issue. And it's been literally like beaming at my soul every single day whenever you do this shit and it's tough like just talk about this shit okay compromise that's what it's all about i don't know why these people all the time think that everything has to be perfect it's not that's ridiculous that's ridiculous beautiful and they are going to love it you know and no. i promise you no matter what no they shouldn't love it dude if you have bad character traits they should call you out on those things 100 percent. this is a bad character trait thinking that you're gonna be perfect for somebody is fucking dumb as you are, you are someone's dream girl, dream person. Yeah, but like, if you are somebody's dream girl or dream person, what is the value in that, dude? Like, let's be honest here for a second, dude. There are plenty of people that would accept the bare minimum in the sense of like, they don't have very many standards at all. So that would mean that you are, by definition, somebody's dream girl because they don't give a fuck who you are. They're just, as long as you got vagina, you're good, you're in. So sure, there are plenty of guys that would deem you to be a dream girl but that doesn't really mean anything because the standards to which that got you to that dream girl category were very limited to begin with you understand like their 100% is like one thing whereas your 100% could be like 50 things if that makes any sense like it just to me it screams I've never dated or like I have no idea what I'm talking about like that's what it's giving to me so I, it's just it's just terrible dude like th there are plenty of dudes that are gonna think you're attractive but that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna find them attractive you know what I'm talking about like that dude that dude watching your video um or like anybody's video you know what I'm saying like beating off is it is thinks that you're perfect and amazing and spectacular and he thinks you are his dream girl but that's not a guarantee or even a chance that you're even gonna you're gonna entertain that thought in any way like it's such a dumb it's such a dumb way of looking at it because we all have different preferences and we all have to unlearn the idea that all men have the same type in women you most men think that fat women are unattractive in the same way that most women think fat men are unattractive as you are are someone's dream person and you will not be disappointing them that's but again it's like it, it's not it's not even taken into account what you want it's such it's so interesting how these people talk about that shit like that person will accept you every single way you are and they'll love you exactly the way you are is a dumb fucking point like i said earlier there's probably a guy out there that has no standards at all and he'll just date whoever the fuck and he'll just accept it is that good no that's not good that's a terrible human being that has no standards that will literally put up with anything and you can walk all over that person so no that's not a good thing and 100 percent, how is that even a guarantee that you're gonna like that person probably not gonna like that person because you will walk all over them and they have no standards and they're just dating you because they want to date somebody that's just what it is so sure there are plenty of people that will date you and think you're perfect and beautiful but that's no guarantee that person will be of quality and it also ignores completely what you want like i don't know how many times i've heard people say like oh yeah there is somebody out there for me but is that somebody out there for you somebody that you want probably not probably not just so you know, you're fat and I think you're ugly and I would never have sex with True. you. True. Yeah, no, that's actually 100% fine. Um, I would never have sex with you either, even if you begged me. In fact, I'd rather not be perceived by you at all. But, like, I'm telling you that you're ugly and I wouldn't have sex with you. Yeah, I guarantee none of this conversation actually happened. These people just make up their own stories in their head to try to make it seem like they own somebody in another way or another shape like i do this sometimes when i go to sleep like rerun stories in the back of my head except i'm a superhero and i can save the world and check me out look at the abs right i do that sometimes but i would never make a video going like oh yeah like you thought you can beat me up but guess what i'm actually a superhero and i can melt your brain with my eyes i guess it's, it's cringe is this is the exact this is exactly what that is you're just making up a story to try to make it seem like you're a lot cooler than you actually are and this this didn't actually happen i'm hot i'm a traditionally hot man and i'm telling you i'd never have sex with you true and i'm telling you as a fat woman that i would never ever have sex with you what is this argument like oh yeah just to let you know i would never have sex with you okay well just to let you know i would never have sex with you huh. oh wow you really got me on that one what what, what how do how do we get here in fact if i had the choice between having sex with you and a lawnmower running over my right foot i would choose the lawnmower without hesitation that's i would not choose the lawnmower
I, I just wouldn't. I that that for me not. But like this is supposed to really upset you. Like you're supposed to be really upset that I don't find you attractive and I think you're too fat to be in public. And I genuinely do not care. Um, every breath I take. Every word you make. Every style you fake, every word you make, every night you think I'll be watching you. That infuriates you because I simply exist it is joyous to Again, me. I just like, nobody's doing this. Nobody's approaching random fat women out in the street and going, you're fat. I would never have sex with you. That's gross. Your entire everything is just disgusting. It's never happening. I'm guaranteeing. It's ne it's, this never happened. So, again, don't care type of men that love fat women are like gym bros i don't know why this is it's a fallacy it's not real dude i i don't know how many times i've heard this it's not real so the gym bro thing is real and i think something people have to remember is that gym bros weren't always gym bros a lot of them started off as scrawny or overweight and they wanted to improve themselves that's why they're all a bunch of nerds the gym bros are nerds they're nerds about fitness they science the crap out of their fitness i feel like a lot of people nowadays uh, I feel like a lot of people nowadays call people nerds when somebody's just interested in something, right? Like, for me, I know a lot of people might be surprised at my vast knowledge on the Roman Empire, right? Like, I know a lot of shit about the Roman Empire. But that doesn't mean I'm a nerd. It just means I spent, like, 40 hours one day watching tons of Roman Empire shit and reading books and documentaries on the Roman Empire while I played Minecraft. Like, it just means you're interested in certain things. And people might call you a nerd for that, because you go to the gym and you know about like you know your fucking metabolic rate or you need you know about like i don't know hypertrophy and you know burning the muscle out and shit like that like you might know about that stuff but overall it's, it doesn't mean you're a nerd it's just you're interested in that thing i mean nerd has a negative context behind it say whatever you want so i don't know it's just interesting when i hear people say that and their nutrition and they and by the way you shouldn't classify people to be nerds if they know about nutrition because you should know about nutrition as a default like i don't know why so like it, it, to sit there and say you're a nerd because you know about nutrition is actually a crazy ass thing to say because everybody should know about nutrition dude there is there are literally so many people in our population that have absolutely no idea what even a calorie is so like it's not it's not a flex to say that they are really into comic books and that's know, not true dude I, I i don't i never heard of a gym bro be into comic books that's a crazy ass thing <laughs> that maybe there might be some gym bros into comic books but i don't think very many cool nerdy things like video games and all that stuff so nerdy things like video games bro what are you from like 20 2002 dude everybody plays video games now it's not just men it's not men that go to the gym Everybody plays video games, dude. Your fucking grandmother plays Animal Crossing, okay, dude? Don't fuck with me. Everybody plays video games. It's not a just a dude thing, and it's also not a nerd thing, dude, okay? You play Grand Theft Auto, right? Don't you? Yes, you do. You played Minecraft. You're a gamer. Suck me. That's just what it is. So it's not actually the meatheads that we think, I mean, some of them might behave like a gym bro, like the typical stereotype, but... I think that a lot of them are nerds. So I think we have to reconceptualize what a gym bro kind of dude is. They, they, they're they not a monolith. Like, they all have different opinions and, and experiences. Yeah, but nobody ever thought that. Like, maybe, maybe that one movie you watched in the early 2000s that made, like, a gym bro look like a gym bro turned, like, maybe you thought that all gym bros were meatheads. But that's never been the case. Like, dudes that go out to the gym and work out, and, like, people that go to the gym probably know what they're doing because it's like more than a hobby for most people it's literally like a lifestyle change and usually when you it is when it is a lifestyle change you investigate a lot of stuff you start learning the deep interest the deep details of a lot of these like uh areas of of, of building muscle so i would have never to sit there and go like oh yeah um for a long time i thought that dudes that went to the gym the meatheads that went to the gym were just dumb That'd be like somebody going, man, for a long time, I thought all black people had ankle bracelets. That's like, that's basically the same thing. Like, why would you think that? That's, <laughs> that's such a crazy ass thing to say. All that stuff. And a lot of them have a sensitivity towards looking less conventionally attractive. Like they're not going to pour pig's blood on you. Why? Wait, what? If you're going to the gym... You're probably working on your physique to a certain degree. And I would go as far as to say most people going to the gym are trying to work on a physique. Building muscle, right? 
by definition, is going to improve your physique. So, I don't know what you mean by these dudes are not really caring about looking. Look, there are there is a group of guys that do gain a lot of muscle, like IFBB pros, the dudes that are like going to compete in like bodybuilding competitions that look really, really not good for most people. Like most people that are going to look at those guys with like, you know, 100, 200 pounds of muscle on their frame. They're not, they're going to look at those guys and go, ugh, right? They're, those guys do exist. Don't get me wrong. But that, those guys are anomalies. Like those, those are very, very few and far between compared to normal dudes going to the gym. Normal guys going to the gym are not stacking 120 fucking pounds of muscle. Normal guys going to the gym are not stacking trembolone sandwiches and fucking stuffing deca down their fucking throat to achieve their fucking their fucking 800 800 pound fucking deadlift or bench press. They're they're not doing that shit. You know what they're doing? They're just casually working out to build their muscles to 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 to, to be better looking in the long run. Most dudes are not fucking IFB pros. I be IFBB pros. Like I don't, I have no idea what she means by like they're not tr- they're trying to look un- less conventionally attractive. If anything, they're they're trying to look more conventionally attractive. Less conventionally attractive. Like they're not gonna pour pig's blood on you you know what i mean but there's also a theory out there about how gym bros were always attracted to bigger women or curvier women why and they became gym bros they wanted to get bigger because they wanted to be bigger than the woman that they're attracted to it's just like you're not telling me the reason why though so like they were originally attracted to bigger women for what reason and they only went to the gym to just to be bigger than bigger women if you're if you're bigger than your boyfriend or if you're bigger than if you're bigger than your boyfriend and you're a girl that's not good that's not a good thing unless your boyfriend is like very very small guy is not a good thing you, you, you women should not be bigger than because like in general men are usually 20 to 30 percent bigger than women on average in terms of height and width so if that if you're bigger than your man that's not a good thing I don't know how many times I got to say that shit. Like, I get it. Like, there are certain circumstances where shit happens and you're a little bit bigger or, like, you're fluctuating your weight or you're pregnant or things such and so forth. That's fine. I'm not here to shit on people for getting pregnant. But I don't know why so many people think it's, like, a flex to be, like, 300 pounds and your boyfriend's, like, 150. It's not good, okay? That's that's terrible. But um, I don't think that these guys went to – I think most people that are going to the gym are doing it I'm not I, – I hope – Okay, most dudes that are going to the gym probably go to the gym for the goal of impressing women. I see that a lot. Like most dudes that are going to the gym have that imagination in their head. Like I'm going to go and I'm going to be more attractive, more desirable towards these women. But something happens usually as you go more and more to the gym and you slowly start to enjoy it more and more and more. And it becomes less about appealing to women or other people and more about, wow, I look really good. Wow, I'm doing a lot of work. Wow, I actually am feeling the difference in my body and I love it. It's more of that. So the reason why they got in the gym was not a good thing, but the end goal was, right? And sometimes uh, how you get there is 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 going to change, right? Like hell, hell is always paved with good intentions and the same thing could be said with going into things. Like sometimes people go into it with the wrong idea, but the end of it, they have the better, they, 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 they come out better, if that makes any sense. Um, but I, I, I don't understand the whole like being smaller and then wanting to be bigger just to pick up bigger girls. I don't know about that. And I think that might have some merit. I don't know. Uh, that I can I can see that the the person I saw posit this is in fact a gym goer. Like he's a gym guy. So so maybe he's talked to enough men to feel like that's true. No, nah, no, nah, that's dumb. That's stupid, dude. That's that doesn't make sense. There is at least one male friend that you have that has suppressed his feelings for you. Unless you're fat, and then you have a long list of men who used you and manipulated you into an emotional connection where you helped them through all of their bullshit and they in turn ghosted you when they found something younger and hotter to this sounds like the casual incel the casual incel argument point like guys that sit there and go man I was with her, dude. I was her friend for so long, dude. I was there. I was there for her when her boyfriend broke up with her. I was there when when she needed a shoulder to cry on. I bought her. I bought her this. I bought her that. I took her here. I took her there. And she still, she still wasn't my girlfriend. She still left me for another guy. We never did anything together. Like I deserve that. Like I did so much for her. That's 
like that all i'm hearing there is like entitlement like you didn't actually do those things because you thought this person was a good person you didn't do these things because you thought that person was a friend you did these things because you wanted sex because you wanted a relationship you were trying to get the end goal of a relationship so it was not the right reasons it's the nice guy approach like i'm gonna do everything and hopefully by the end of it, like I can sneak in there and then get like when I when the opportunity comes, I'm going to be able to like grab onto it and like pull her down or something like that. That's what I'm hearing here is like, oh, yeah, these guys emotionally manipulated me. Oftentimes I see like, oh, yeah, we just had sex for four months and then this guy just left me. And then you ask like, oh, um, were you guys dating? And they go, no, we weren't dating. We we're like friends with benefits. And you go, like, OK, well, you were friends with benefits and he left you for another girl. Yeah. And I always go like. So what the fuck did you want? Like, <laughs> what the fuck did you want? If you were friends with benefits, dude, why did you expect it to go further than that? It's the same thing as like a guy thinking that if a girl gives him any type of attention, suddenly that, that that girl owes them sex or some way. No, that's not the case. Sometimes people are just people. But um, this is an incel argument point. The fuck, okay? <laughs> I'm looking at you, Brandon, Dylan, Joe, Damn. Kyle. Damn, dude, what the fuck? How many people were that, dude? Hold up. <laughs> Brandon, Dylan, Joe, Kyle. Damn, dude. Dude, there's at least five dudes here. That's crazy. Six dudes. Six dudes that she had sex with that she got emotionally abused. Even the cat. The cat is literally looking at her like, damn. That's a lot of dudes, bro. So you let all these guys have sex with you and you got nothing out of it? Okay. Don't get me wrong. There are times in your life where things happen and you don't know better because how could you know better? You've never been through these scenarios before. So it's a learning experience. So you go through one, maybe two experiences and then you learn from these things. And you go, I'm never going to do that again. And then you do it again and then you do it again and then you do it again and then you do it again. What the fuck? What the fuck? What is going on, dude? I, I mean, I, I, at this point, I can't be blaming like Tim Alex and, and, and many, many more like granted. If they were bad guys, I'm not forgiving that. But why did you keep putting yourself in scenarios where these dudes were just having sex with you or like using you and then just leaving you afterwards? What are you doing? Why is it always happening to you like this? To, 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 to me, it seems like maybe you're the issue. Uh, so excuse my weird mouth movement. I had a root canal this morning, so my whole face is numb. Um, but I had to get on here and complain. <laughs> Because I'm trying online dating for the millionth time, and every time I do it, it's like, no, this isn't for me. Um, but I always have to do it just to remind myself that it's not for me. Uh, and it's actually, this go-round going decent, honestly. You know, you have your bad apples, but it's going alright. But then, last night, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. I'm like, okay, maybe this time will be different. I have, I, I paid for a week of Bumble uh, premium or whatever they call it. Man, they got you, dude. That's, man, you know, the problem with dating apps now, I don't know, because I've been out of the dating game for a long time. I don't know how good it is to have dating, like, premium services. And if you guys don't know what that is, like, so, for instance, if you get things like Tinder or Bumble or whatever the fuck is going on now, right, or POF or whatever, there's only a certain amount of swipes that you could do a day. And I think I'm pretty sure that most of these services do run off the swipe system. And if you're a guy, I don't know if girls like take it serious or not. I presume that they do since I've literally seen girls like go through, look at the, each profile and go, nope, 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 nope. And then eventually swipe, swipe right on one guy and then do, do swipe left on like 50 other guys. But most dudes are just swiping, swiping, swiping right all day. Like back in the day when I was in the dating market, I would just play video games and just do this all day. Just go like this. Just sit for hours because there would be unlimited, um, unlimited swipes. But nowadays, it's not like that. You actually have to pay for the swipes. And depending on the, because they have different services. So like for instance, you can get the silver, gold, premium, silver, gold, platinum, premium, right? And then maybe it's like two more systems up. But each one of those is like, I don't know, $5 in between. But the mega package is like 40 bucks. Um, 
but you pay more money to have more swipes or more interactions with people or have the ability to see who liked you or be, have the ability to instantly message whoever the fuck you want to. And it's like, it's really tough because all it's doing now is like, I get it. Like you want to be in the dating market and you want to have as much success as possible. And maybe that $5 is not that big of a deal in the long run. But some of these people are on these apps for months, dude. And you're just sitting there paying and paying and paying. And once you buy it once, you're never going to not buy it because now you realize how much you're missing after you bought it once. And it sucks so much dick because there's really like, it just traps you now. It traps you in an endless circle of like, I paid for a month, so I might as well see if I can get a month out of it. And it's just not, I don't know, man. It's just a tragic system nowadays, dude. Um, by the way, whenever I was on the dating apps and I saw somebody with a premium account, I always thought that person was like a fuck boy. A fuck girl, sorry, a fuck girl. Now I was on the, I wasn't on the gay site, but that's what people usually call people as fuck boys and shit like that. Um, I, I just thought that the girl was just looking for dick, which was fine if you wanted to look for dick. I'm not shaming you for looking for dick, but for me, I'm not looking for somebody that's looking for dick. Because I'm like, this is like so useless if you can't see who likes you. So you know, I have my list of guys who like me, and I'm going through them, and I'm pretty, pretty picky. I'm gonna be honest because. I'm looking for a relationship and, uh, you know, I know what kind of man I want to be with. Um, he has to be strong in his faith. He, he has to be damn strong in your faith is kind of, it's fine. It's okay. But like how strong in his faith is he? Like you can't have sex before marriage type shit or like goes to church on the weekends. Like what, how strong in the faith are we talking, bro? Listen, I'm gonna keep it a buck at you. If you're already working off a disadvantage and you're talking about some, I'm picky when it comes to dating and you haven't dated in a long time, why? Why? It's I like to have some restrictions, right? Like I know when I was in the dating market and sometimes I'd talk to girls and I'm like, wow, you know, this girl seems nice. She seems like a great girl to talk to. Then you talk to her for more than 10 minutes. You're like, oh, this girl is crazy. This girl is actually crazy, right? Uh, or like, you know, maybe she just tells you that she casually bleeds out of her vagina or like, I don't know, maybe she's like casually just walking around with a yeast infection. Like I remember I had a literal one time a girl tell me that she, I could have sex with her, but she did have a yeast infection. So it might be a little bit uncomfortable for me. And she said it was like yogurty and that she would have condoms anyway. So it wouldn't be a big deal, which I actually was really concerned about because how often are you fucking that you knew that this was going to be an issue for me and you had condoms, but Anyway, the point I'm making is, um, I don't even know what the point I'm making is. A gentleman, like he, those are the big ones, right? Can't be an asshole, has to love that. Can't be, okay, those are not, okay. It's like, if you're saying you're picky and then you have the two restrictions of you're either lying or you're, or you're really, really, really God, like this has to, like the religion is really, really big. And uh, a lot of people nowadays are not religious doesn't sound too hard right it just depends on what you mean by religious like it's not hard if it's just like that if it's just like if it's what i think it is it's probably not that bad but if it's like must be you know must has, has to go back outside you know and pray to the pray to god while you churn fucking butter in the back fucking yard while you grow out an amish beard like probably not like that's probably really fucking difficult for a lot of people but if you're sitting here telling me that you just want a guy to go to church with you and maybe like pray with you on the bedside before you go to bed i'm sure that's not a problem that's probably not a problem but like i said if it's like anything if it's more than that can't have sex before marriage you know must pray to god like every fucking day like it's probably going to be a difficult thing so there's this one guy who liked me and i'm like he's kind of cute like okay so i like him back and i you know you have to message them first on bumble and i put my phone away and i I don't know when did things and then I came back and I checked my phone and this is what this man had the audacity to write to me he said you're so fat <laughs> it's already it's already crazy it's already crazy bro he set it up like a joke you're so fat can you imagine the opening message of a guy being you're so fat. I, 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 I almost can't. It's already, it's already bad. If I'm reading you're so fat as the first message, I'm all, I'm not even going to read the rest. To me, he said, you're so fat. Jesus Christ, lose some fucking weight. 
damn, that's because you're religious. Because you're religious. You're so fat. Jesus Christ, lose some weight. Damn, that's tough. That's that's tough. I mean, it's not the worst. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. He could have easily went way harder than that. But uh, that's pretty bad. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. And listen, as a plus size woman. You know what I, you know what I get sometimes? It's like I have these... Like, okay, when I was on dating apps, right, I had a lot of experiences with a lot of different people. And sure, there were some really weird or, like, really bad first messages of somebody looking, like, maybe they message you or you message them. And they go, like, oh, my God, you're so fucking ugly. You look like Sasquatch. You know, you you look like somebody, you know, you look like asparagus in, inverted. Um, how dare you think you can message me? You, you look like you smell bad. Like, stuff like that. Sure, like it's very bad messages, but I'm gonna keep it buck with you. Like, the fact that I've had so many interactions with people, like you would need to be very, 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 um, specific, or you would need to be very, very like convoluted in, in the way you disrespect me, because like basic insults at the point that I'm at right now are like nothing. Like you hit me with a "you look ugly," I'm like, okay, bro, like whatever, bro. That's like nothing. But the ones that almost always got me were the guys like men would hit me up under the guise of being women and they would be like listen dude what do you got to lose and i just i remember like thinking about that sometimes and going like what the fuck are you implying like what do you what do you even are you saying that like i'm so ugly that like the idea of having sex with a man is just like way more of a feasible option compared to like date waiting to date a woman like he knew that i was never getting any matches from women already so i might as well just take a chance with a man like sometimes i would think back to that shit i'm like that's fucking crazy like you know how disrespectful that is that's so disrespectful but it would happen so often where dudes would be like listen dude let's be honest man what are you what are you really doing like come on man stop it just stop it it, it brings up like i remember i used to work at this establishment and this dude i used to work for this guy named barry and he used to call me up on my days off and he'd be like, listen, David, um, we're really short staffed today. We don't have anybody at the registers. Like I'm on the registers right now. That's how short staffed we are. Do you think you could come in and do you think that you could help us out? And I'd be like, uh, nah, like, nah, I can't like, it's my day off. Like I got a lot of stuff doing today. I've got a lot of things I'm doing today. And he would go, come on, Dave. I mean, like, what are you really doing? And I'm just like, they're like, bro, what the fuck? What the fuck, dude? What you mean? What do I got? What are you, what are you talking about? They're like, yeah, you don't really got you. you why are you lying? Like, you know, you can come in and work. Just come in and work. That's all you need to do. Come and work. And it's just like so disrespectful to even say some dumb shit like that, which is uh, one of the reasons why I would never pick up Never pick up the phone on an employer. I don't give a fuck. It's my day off. I don't need to tell you why or why not. I'm not in the work at that time. It's your day off. You don't need to justify that shit. It's just like at that point, if you know you're right, you're right. I don't need to give you a justification or qualify it. But a lot of gay dudes will hit me with that shit. Like, what are you come on, man. You know, you it's hard, right? <laughs> you might as well just come over here and swallow me down real quick. This kind of message is our worst fear, right? Our worst that, it's not that bad, though, if I'm being honest with you. Like, it was kind of funny a little bit, but not really. It, it was a high. It's a nightmare. We just try to exist in this life, right? We yeah, but you, you got to understand, too. You got to understand that, like, you're not going to be exempt from criticism. Like, I get it. You're just trying to exist. But... Dude, you know, there's going to be problems, dude. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I tell you. You just existing in general, you're going to get mean comments. Let's try to exist in our bodies. And if we're lucky enough, we can come to a place of self-love and self-acceptance and know that, yes, we are bigger than society thinks that we should be. And that can be for a lot of different reasons. I'm not going to get into all the body positivity right now, okay? And the point is, it is hard enough to be a plus size woman in this world because people fucking hate us they so what do you want like it's hard enough to be a plus size girly in this world therefore i shouldn't be getting bad messages on on fucking dating apps bro what do you want like I, what the fuck bro you're putting yourself out there obviously there are going to be people that are going to be mean and that's not even necessarily a bad thing in the sense of like it's going to happen you get you know, it, it's a double-edged coin. It's a double side of a coin. Like, you get good people, you get bad people, and you have to accept it. I mean, I get it. You don't want to face the bad stuff. Nobody does. But the alternative is you don't get the good either. So you have to accept it. I don't even understand your point here. Like, oh, yeah, I'm already suffering. But, like, you have to understand it from their perspective. They don't give a fuck. Why? If you're sitting there going, like, I already have to deal with so much throughout the day. 
why should I have to deal with the fact that like dudes are hitting me up and calling me busted, bu uh, busted, bugly fucking, you know, lasagna um, because they don't care. That's literally the entire purpose. Like you complaining about it is literally the reason why they do it like that. That's that is quite literally the reason like you're feeding into it right now by making this video like you are doing exactly what they want you to do. But I mean, it's very easy to fall into the trap if you're not already like well versed into the the online do the online market so i mean I, I get it but simultaneously dude who the fuck are you like people are gonna <laughs> people are gonna make fun of you bro it is what it is i mean it's not a good thing but it is what it is yes just for existing but when you take your time have you ever been okay look i'm gonna keep it a buck okay being in the old school call of duty lobbies if you were a woman or a black guy it was gg for you okay it was probably worse for women because if you were a black guy, there was only like three things they can call you. So like, I guess they can call you the N-word, maybe some assortment of that. They would maybe call you like a pre, you know, they'd be like, oh, you just got out of prison. Um, where's your dad? Like, those are the things that they would say, right? Um, if you were a woman, you would hear things like, yo, yo, can you fit, can you fit your fist in your mouth? Can you put your fist in your mouth? If you can't, then we can't talk. Sorry. Sorry. Keep in mind. They'd be like nine-year-olds saying this. Hey, um, if you could measure your boobs in inches, how big would they be? And then the girl would go, what the fuck? What? And then he would go, oh, my bad. You can't do that. I meant feet. I meant feet. How many? Or you would hear like, hey, um, can you just really quickly like, can you, can you put your microphone up to your vagina so I could hear that shit? Like, that's what you would just hear. It was really bad for girls, bro. And I don't, I don't know if it's any better nowadays because I haven't been in voice channel chats on like fucking any game because like you get banned for that shit now. But back in the day, it was very bad. And don't get me wrong. It wasn't just men that were making these comments. Women would compete with each other because sometimes there was a lot of value in being a woman in a lobby because it was kind of like one woman and then you had 11 men all trying to find ways to seduce you even though obviously they never could but sometimes what would happen is there would be another girl that joined up and they would compete they would battle to have the attention so they would say crazy shit and it was insane like sometimes you would hear guys right guys would go my dick bigger than yours you know i got that crazy long john silver shit my shit is literally dragging on the floor right now i got rug burn on my shit i got holes in my ceiling because my dick's so big right you say you hear that but the women would go they would say some crazy shit they'd be like yeah that's why my pussy tighter than yours that's why my pussy on different shit my pussy be talking to my boys like you don't know nothing about that that's why my titties your areolas you got them big ass fucking pepperoni areolas i bet you got four nipples like when they would go really crazy like how many utis you had today like i bet you got four yeast infections right now like that's what they would say to each other man and it was crazy it was it was like insane dude if you thought dudes shit talking each other was insane two women shit talking each other was absolutely crazy but ultimately after many years of being on the internet i, I found out that most women on the internet are just men so those two women were probably just men so anyway and your energy to purposely like me, you know, swipe right on me yeah. so that I might swipe right yeah. on you so that you can fucking get in my DMs and yeah. bully me. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will agree. It is kind of crazy, bro. I've had that happen to me a few times with a girl like you and you're like, oh, she liked me. And then you go hit her up and you're like, hey, what's going on? And they go, ha, you're ugly. You look fucking terrible. You look like Ditto from Pokemon. And then you're just like, like, bro, but you but you liked me. I couldn't even message you if you didn't like me. Why would you like me only to disrespect me in this like really, really flabbergasting way? It is kind of diabolical. I'll give her that. And harass me? I wouldn't say harass. Let's be honest here. It was just some guy saying, <laughs> come on, bro. The, the language is kind of crazy. Dude. It's not harassment for some guy to hit you up and be like, damn, you got big. You got really big. It's a messaging system on a dating app. Come on. Harass is crazy. Absolutely the fuck not. Absolutely the fuck not. And I have to thank this man because now I am so incensed and so enraged that I'm going to. If, if you're that upset about it you need to get off the internet i gotta keep it a buck with you some people just can't handle the internet if you're sitting here and you got disrespected on the internet and now you're crying about it you need to chill back off the internet you just can't do it it's all right it's okay to say that 
some people just are some people are not credit card people some people get credit cards and they think that the money on the credit card is their money it's not it's the company's money you're just like that for dating or like being on the internet just get off the internet can't handle it find the love of my life in spite of his nastiness in spite of his negativity because if there's one thing i don't do it's back down from challenges because so, i won't back down well, thank you sir no for your disgusting my attitude. ground thank you for your bullying your your unnecessary and and unasked for unprovoked that's the word i'm looking for your unprovoked bullying all i did was exist isn't mo isn't all i guess not it's just weird like if you're asking to be bullied it almost kind of seems like it's not bullying you know i feel like bullying by definition needs to be unprovoked right like it, it just kind of seems weird that how could it how could it not be right like oh yeah bro i want you to diss me hard at that point it's just probably like a roast session but maybe you're into it but a bullying session literally needs i believe to be unprovoked this is kind of weird wording for this woman i mean she's clearly trying to embrace it but she's also claiming to be victim very hard here unprovoked that's the word i'm looking for your unprovoked bullying all i did was exist in an online space you didn't just man it's just like these people will say these words dude i'm sick of people saying things and making it seem like they're in the it's not just that you exist it, it's not you put yourself on a dating app you're you're literally opening yourself up to other people to communicate with you you have a tiktok account there are plenty of ways that you put yourself out there to 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 get responses that's literally the entire purpose of this right to get attention and not all of that attention is going to be the attention that you want and that's okay right but you have to at least expect it you have to at least expect that you're going to get these types of responses now i get that you don't want to have these responses but the way you're making it seem like is like this guy is all in the wrong he's not like it is what it is he made a little joke it is what it is, bro. You, you, just, if you can't handle the heat, get out the kitchen. Your unprovoked bullying. All I did was exist in an online space. And that made you so angry. It's, he probably wasn't even angry at all. He probably just saw you was like, yo, I'm about to make this fat bitch fucking. I'm about to, I'm about to make her upset. And he did. He got you. You fell for the trap. You literally saw it too. It's crazy. You literally saw the trap. It was outlined. It was a big X on the floor. And you looked up. And it said it was an anvil. It was like a, one of those comical anvils that was being held up by a crane. And right on the bottom of the anvil, it said, this is a trap. Do not step on the X. And you looked at it and you said, ah, uh, what does this X do again? And then you stepped on the X and now you're upset. What the fuck? Why would you put yourself in a position like this then? If you didn't want to do it, then just don't do it. So angry. Yeah, he's not the angry one. You're the angry one. You're you're literally the angry one. He he's not. He 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 just made a joke. For what? And look, for for a while. Last time I posted about being a plus size woman in this world, it kind of blew up, and people were so nasty in the comments. So nasty. I ended up deleting the video. It got like thirty thousand views, thousands of comments, and I deleted it because people were so nasty. But if this goes viral, which I doubt it will, but if it does. I'm not fucking backing down anymore. True. I'm not going to apologize anymore for existing in my body. My I mean, it's not exactly what you're doing, but I mean, go off queen, right? I mean, I, I love when people say things with when they don't actually know what they're saying. Like, oh yeah, all I'm doing is existing. Like, I'm not going to apologize for existing. You're not just existing. You're making a video and you're saying a lot of things and you're provoking responses and you're obviously looking for attention. So when you say all I'm doing is existing, that's fucking dumb. That's not what you're fucking doing. Stop trying to gaslight us. We're not stupid. Stop saying this dumb shit. Journey is none of your business. What do you mean it's none of my business? You're fucking posting it. You're literally posting it online. You can't say it's none of my business if you're posting it publicly. What do you mean? You're literally making it my business. I, what the fuck? My body yeah. is not for your opinion. Okay. If you don't like it, move along. It takes zero dollars to say nothing. And it takes zero. You know, that's so interesting that you say that. Hmm. It takes zero dollars to say nothing. Really? It takes zero dollars to say nothing, and yet you still made this video, and you still made that profile, and you still responded to comments, and you still... 
Okay. I mean, yeah, totally. I, I, it's just like, I would just really love for these people to look in the mirror when they say any of this stuff. Or just like, turn on their phone and go on selfie mode and say that stuff. Please. If you don't like it, move along. It takes zero dollars. Bro, there's so many, there's so many instances during this woman's video that it could easily break out into song and dance. Like, it's so crazy, dude. How many times did I already do it, right? Don't back down. There was another song. Your opinion. Hold on, ready for it? If you don't like it, move along. It takes... Move along, move along, like I know you do. And even when your hope is gone, move along, move along, like I know you do. Dude, I think that sometimes what we need to do is like we need to have counters in the videos of all the times we could just randomly start picking up songs. It takes zero dollars to say nothing. It takes zero dollars to just mind your freaking business. True. So, and that's all. Love you, bestie. True. Totally mind your business, guys. Even though she made a video and she's looking for responses and she's literally telling people to comment and she's literally asking for opinions and she's doing all this stuff to get attention. No. Mind your business. Mind it. Mind it, dude. Okay? Stop it. It's not her fault. It's your fault. Obviously. The projection is through the roof, right? Anyway. We're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. Thank you, everybody that's a subscriber already and a member. Thank you so much. You guys are literally all amazing, spectacular, beautiful, just organisms upon this planet. I love you. I care for you. You guys all have amazing, amazing, beautiful personalities behind you. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety, and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in bag B-A-G because you got to get the bag, right? That's just what it is. That's what people tell me nowadays. You got to get the bag. You got to stay fashionable. You got to make sure that you get the, the good, beautiful, amazing coaches, the MKs or whatever is good nowadays. I don't know. A lot of people tell me that MKs are garbage and a lot of people tell me coaches are garbage. I'm sorry that I cannot afford those fucking $40,000 bags that are made from like alligator skin, like baby alligator foreskin. I don't know. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I don't have the fucking sufficient funds to buy those things. So I'm going to be modest and buy an MK, I guess. But anyway, write bag down below and then I will acknowledge how beautiful you are. And by the way, you are beautiful. You're super beautiful, ultra beautiful. I can tell that you've been focusing on the hydration. You've been focusing on the nutrition. You've been focusing on making yourself very desirable because obviously even if, even if you're sitting here and you're looking for a potential partner and you're trying to find somebody to be with, you know that it's not just about what you want, but how to make yourself more attractive to make sure the other person thinks you're attractive also, so that's really amazing, and I'm glad you're doing that. That's so great. You smell so good today. I care for you deeply. I love your elbows. I love the way your hair looks. I care about your entire kneecaps. That's so good. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it will be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff. It will all be linked in the description of this video and the description of the channel. All you have to do is click on the about, and you'll see it all. It's all hyperlinked, too, so you can just go ahead and click on it. It'll take you directly to whatever that's clicked on. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.